Academica Media. From Academica Media Studios in Miami, Florida, it's Big Ideas in Education, a weekly recap of inspiration and innovation in your schools. Hello, education lovers. Excited as always to have you here joining us on this week's installment of Big Ideas in Education. I'm Ryan Carella from Doral College, happily joined as always by Dr. Sarah Bulos Fai from Somerset Academy Schools. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Ryan. Hello, everyone. This is going to be great. I am so excited for your story, Sarah. I, I used to love it when my elementary school did what you're about to talk about when I was a kid, and I know the viewers are going to love it as well. Let's get right into it. What story do you have for us? Well, it's a really cool story about a program that's going on right in our own backyard. Um, Miami-Dade Schools offers local business and community leaders the chance to be principal for a day. Uh, NBC6's Ari Odzer got a chance to see what that's like firsthand in this clip. Basically, my job is to stay out of the way and let the professionals do what they do. Don't break anything. Don't break anything. Yes. Okay, All right. yes. I can do that. Yes. I can do that. <laughs> and with that vote of confidence, my day as principal of iPrep Academy was off and running. The pre-K kids showed off their cuteness and singing skills, and the older students had lots of questions about TV news. What's the funnest part of your job? The funnest part of our job is doing things like this. If I wasn't in journalism, I don't know. Maybe I'd be a teacher. Maybe I'd be teaching social studies. Or maybe principal suits me. Yeah, this is such an easy gig. And what size did you wear? I'll order it right now. Hey, Ari, I know being a principal is really difficult. Are you doing okay? Yeah, everything's good. We got this under control. No problems. When you see, compare, contrast. The teachers certainly have things under control. The Principal Today program allows business and community leaders to see education as it happens. And as a result, there is increased awareness about what education is all about. There is increased goodwill. There is the exchange and the interaction with students. And we often get internships uh, for students. Uh, we get mentorships for students. Hey, has anyone seen Mr. Ozer, the principal for the day? We've lost him again. It's all good. I'm out on the PE court dominating in hoops as usual. <laughs> Here you go, kid, your ball. <laughs> Woo! Teaching sportsmanship is important. Good. Anyone else? Academics, of course, is the top priority of every school. And today, I learned to be a successful principal, you need to know your audience. I'm your guest principal for the day. So today, no homework. Yeah! In Miami, Ari Odzer, NBC6 News. I love it. <laughs> According to dadeschools.net, the goal of the program is for participants to build relationships and translate their experience of the day into a long-term partnership that enhances the learning environment and supports student achievement. Principals and partners can discuss their long-term goals and ideas that the partner may be able to collaborate or assist. I, I absolutely love the idea of this program, and it's been going on for more than a decade here in South Florida. I think the idea of getting community members into schools to see what's going on and how hard our students and teachers are working is, is amazing. And obviously it's, it's critical to the public's understanding of what's going on in schools, but it also provides an opportunity for partnership, as you heard in the clip, you know, with internships and, and other opportunities for students. Uh, Ryan, ha did you know about this program? I, I, I don't know that it was uh, Well, uh, I didn't know about it famous. as a, I didn't know about it as a district-wide initiative yeah. that, you know, that apparently, I didn't know that this was something that Superintendent Carvalho did in our neck of the woods. I know that when I was a kid, our elementary school uh, did sort of its own version of this, and it was... Uh, they brought in members of the community to be teachers, to be mm. office workers, and to have a principal for the day. They also did a principal for the day thing with students, where the students got to fill the roles of teachers and administrators. Oh, my God. Yeah, I remember I have a very distinct memory of our fifth grade student council president getting to sit at the principal's desk with his feet up. And it was uh, it was quite a joy. And all of that stuff is, is humorous, and it puts a smile on your face when you get to see a story like that. Ari Odzer always does funny stories like that here in Miami, and we love it. But it's also useful in instilling a sense of empathy among the stakeholder groups. It's important yeah. for parents and community members to see what our principals and our teachers go through every day. 
And it also instills a sense of dialogue, right? It provides an opportunity to get stakeholder input, to allow members of the community to weigh in and provide their outsider perspective on the way that we're running our schools. There's so much to love about this, and I'm sure the kids love it too because they get to meet a prominent journalist from our community and find out what he does for a living. Yeah, and you heard, you know, kids were asking questions, and I think that's a big thing, you know, especially thinking to when we were in school. Anytime a person comes in the classroom that's not your teacher, it's always exciting to be like, <laughs> what's going on? What's, you know? <laughs> um, but hearing from community members, I think, is really important for kids. But I, I personally think it's really important for community members to hear what's going on from kids, right? I think that piece is really cool. And I can only imagine being a business leader going back to your place of work the next day and thinking, you know, those kids were asking me questions about this, that, and the other. I wonder, you know, if those kids would like this opportunity or that opportunity or getting a new um a, a perspective on the way things work in our schools and how difficult it really is to be a school leader. Um, that that kind of awareness in our community, as as you heard in the clip, does foster goodwill. I think that being a voice for our students and our teachers is is really tremendous, and I, I love that part of it. Yeah, and it's sort of the one instance of a broader narrative that we want to encourage among schools, which is not just to allow stakeholder input, parent input into the way schools are run, but to actually welcome it, to encourage it, to create systems and days around getting this sort of stakeholder input. It's something that a lot of the schools we work with, Sarah, do really, really well, even in just the micro level where you hear principals say, when I see a parent come into the door, the first thing I do is run out of my office and greet them myself to let them know that this school belongs to them too. And we welcome their input and we want them to make them feel like this is a home for them. The more that we sort of see schools as just like this walled off thing where kids are allowed in, but the community is not, that I think is sort of a recipe for a lot of difficulties for school. Whereas if you make it a place where it's a team effort and the entire community can come in as stakeholders and, and feel a sense of ownership to make that school even stronger, that's when great things happen. And so, yeah, I love stories like this. And NBC6 did a really good job in that clip. Just It was funny getting to see the, the teachers and the principals do a little bit of acting there. I thought that was just mwah, chef's kiss, great performance all around. And uh, just another example of Superintendent Carvalho here in Miami-Dade doing some really cool stuff in terms of getting into the community. I'll tell you, like I, I do a lot of uh, student activities with Miami-Dade County Public Schools. I'm a judge at the We the People competition every year, which is one of my favorite things to do. And without fail, he's always there. He loves uh, this sort of community engagement. He loves getting into the classroom and interacting with the kids. And uh, more importantly, making sure that members of the community are also interacting with the kids, and in this case, members of the media. Absolutely. Well, I know you're really excited to share something that you wanted to get me uh, all hopped up about, so I'd love to hear what it is. Yeah, this is a cool story, too, uh, from our friends at Ed Week. As you know, Sarah, research is continuing to show how students of all races benefit from having educators and principals of color on campus. And there's also data that shows that teachers of color benefit from having principals of the same race in their schools. But as recent data show, many districts are continuing to struggle to place leaders of colors in, in their school. A recent article in Ed Week by Denisa R. Superville cites federal studies indicating that only 20% of public school principals in the United States are non-white, even though students of color make up over half of the public school population today. The article contends that this racial gap won't fix itself, but rather will require a comprehensive commitment by school districts to recruit and retain an effective and diverse workforce. The article identifies laudable best practices for certain school districts, uh, of certain school districts, I should say, including reviewing internal policies that may be a barrier for educators of color to enter leadership positions and working with historically black colleges and universities to train a pipeline of equity centered teachers and future principals. The article notes uh, of greatest importance that it is critical for school districts to hold themselves accountable by setting specific recruitment targets and benchmarks and developing specific guidelines and criteria to steer talented teachers of color into school leadership roles. That's an interesting component to me, Sarah, is if you're trying to recruit school leaders of color, there's really two dimensions that you got to focus on on the recruitment track. It's about identifying talented 
potential educators of color while they're in college, while they're at a young age. And then once you have them in the system as teachers, continuing that recruitment effort to make sure that today's teachers of color can become tomorrow's school leaders of color. Yeah. Well, you've heard me say on the show before, and it, it may not seem related, but how can we have principals and school leaders of color if we cannot retain teachers of color? That's that's something mm-hmm. that I think is a huge issue. So nationwide, more than 50% of all teachers leave within five years. And then the numbers for teachers of color is actually even higher than that. So we're talking about more than half of teachers of color leaving within the first five years. So that narrows our pool of applicants already significantly, right? So you have a small group of people going in and then we're losing them. So it it may sound like I'm going off course, but really this is a teacher retention problem because you don't really have principals if they haven't been teachers for a while, right? If they haven't had that experience before they go into a leadership position. So I think that while the recruitment efforts are really important, the retention efforts are going to be just as critically important because you're not going to be able to move people into those leadership positions who've only been in the field two, three years, right? I I don't know how many people spend two years in the classroom and then go directly into leadership. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, So I, I think that identifying that this is an issue is a huge, huge um, necessary step, right? Because to hear that 80% of school leaders are white when only 30 to 40% of students are white, it says that we're not making sure that the makeup of our leadership is reflective of the schools and the communities that are being served. And that's a big issue. Yeah. And to your point earlier about making sure that this principle of color recruitment is a long-term process. The article and other articles talk a lot about how it really is throughout the entire professional life cycle of an educator. It starts when that person is in college or possibly high school to set them on the path of uh, potentially becoming a teacher of color. And once they become a teacher, it's continuing to support and cultivate them and make sure you can retain those professionals. And it doesn't even stop there. The article talks about how Sometimes we're losing these potential school leaders of color kind of at the five yard line as assistant principals. There is a lot of situations where you have a school that has assistant principals of color and we're not giving them that last bit of support they need to eventually ascend to school leaders. So you really got to it's it's a it's a long term continuous process of, of cultivating these leaders and really making sure that you take comprehensive steps. It's not enough to pay lip service to this. It's not enough to say oh, this is something we have to do and we're going to do, you got to set specific benchmarks. You got to set comprehensive policies. You have to look at your uh, policies and procedures throughout your system and figure out what what is it about how we've set things up, either through formal policies or informal norms, that's creating a situation where we're losing these potential talented educators and making sure that you take steps to uh, ameliorate that. I know that I could spend a lot of time talking about this, but I, I'm going to put myself out there and say recruitment is not the problem, right? Okay. Recruitment is not the problem. We know how to get people in the door. We know how to get people in the classroom. We know how to get people into leadership positions. The problem is we can't keep people there. And when we cannot keep people there, we need to take a hard look at what the – teaching environment, the leadership environment, the work environment looks like for our educators? And why is it that this is not a long-term option for highly qualified, extremely talented people? That's a that's a difficult question to answer. It's obviously not something we could answer in the short program that we have, but it's it's a systemic it's a systemic issue it's it's an issue that research has been tackling but we have to on a small scale when we're talking about the schools that we are in day to day and on a large scale what schooling looks like for this country why is it that people do not want to stay in this field what is it that we are doing that make it an inhospitable atmosphere and and especially so for teachers and leaders of color that is 
a tough reflective exercise that we need to be doing and we need to be honest and we need to be accountable to why we have created these environments in our school. Um, I, I hear every single day teachers leaving in droves. I mean, the teacher shortage has been something we've been talking about for over a decade, but the pandemic has really made it so much worse. And so we really, this is going to be a situation that does not have a simple answer. I think you said that does not have a simple answer, but I personally do not think it is a question of recruitment. I think it is a question of retention and what are we doing in our schools to make sure that this is a work environment that is sustainable. Yeah. In the end, it, it all comes back to teacher recruitment, as you said. I can't say it any better than that. I'd love to hear what our uh, listeners out there think of this. I know this is something that every school district to some extent is tackling, and I'm sure that there are some folks out there who have some best practices, who have some stories they want to share. We encourage you all to tweet at us at Academica Media with the hashtag Big Ideas in Education. Let us know your thoughts on this, then help us keep the conversation going. Sarah, it's a pleasure as always. I learn so much from hanging with you every week. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, everyone. expressed on the preceding program have been those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect the views of Academica, its clients, staff, affiliates, or advertisers. 